All right, welcome everybody to the Tuesday afternoon team call. I'm super excited to be here with you guys today. I uh, just got off of an awesome one-on-one -on -one call with Chris Pandolfo in the U in the UK. Uh, if you guys don't know, uh, he was able to come speak at Super Weekend in Salt Lake City all the way from the UK, share his story up there, then also be on a guys panel um, where they did a little Q&A. Uh, and then him and I got to spend some time together up at my cabin, like it snowed a ton. So that was cool for him to see more snow than he normally sees. He got to shoot some guns for the first time in his life. So we did all things American <laughs> out there. Uh, and it was just an awesome experience. So, uh, you know, we might, this might come out a little bit during our team call today. Uh, the topic is going to be 10 questions to help you break through in any area of your life. Uh, I'm not, it's not going to be a training really. I've presented this uh, multiple times at different super Saturdays where it's, where it's like a training where I share a whole bunch of stories. And I, I go through the questions personally, like I answer them for my audience so that they can see breakthroughs I've gone through and then relate them to their life. However, today we're not going to do it that way. Uh, you guys are going to be answering those questions. Um, so, so we can see, uh, so we can help you guys break through um, in those different areas of your life. So um, Chris, I know you have a little bit of a cold, but, uh, can I just start this off with asking you to unmute and just kind of share, there's been a shift in Chris, um, you know, he's speech body challenge winner, lost over 170 pounds, won a hundred thousand dollars, but he had this, he came to <clears throat> and spent time with my star diamond, Kara and CJ spent time with me, uh, spent time at super weekend and something happened. So Chris, I want you to just share a little bit of your experience. Yeah, it's it, it took a while to process, if I'm being completely honest, um, because it, it was it was overwhelming. It was something that needed to happen as well. Um, I actually came over not to share my story and not to speak at a super weekend. That's a blessing, what I ended up doing. But it was more to just um, share life with like you, Scotty, and CJ, and Kira, and Shaley, and, um, and everyone else. And there was a moment, um, huh, you, you, you saw a little bit of the aftermath. <laughs> there was a moment I was stood um, outside your cabin and looking out onto the lake. And I was just thinking, it was the mixture of having the absolute time of my life and learning so much from you, just how, how you do life, not even just like beach body, but just like how you do life. And there was, I was partly guilty because Haley and the girls weren't there. And I was also thinking about like what I was coming home to, which is a decent enough job, uh, a decent enough career, but, but, I couldn't bear the thought of, you know, the way the world is at the moment. I couldn't bear the thought of coming home and taking part in what I regarded as uh, a, a, a fixed fight, you know, like a boxing match or a UFC match where it doesn't matter how hard I train, it doesn't matter, uh, you know, how hard I fight, like I can't win that fight which is grinding away in that job and, you know, struggling to pay, the, you know, the bills and just keeping up with things. So I wasn't looking at your, I wasn't looking at your cabin thinking, I want a cabin just like this. And it wasn't, I want a van like this. It was, I, I not I want, I, I need, need my girls to be, to live a freer life than they have been. Like they need to, I wanted them to experience the freedom. And I was like, well, I've had an opportunity here for the past however long. And I've only really, if I'm honest with myself, dabbled in it, which is why I've limited my income. But I'm, but now, like it all, it all, the penny drops, it all came together at the same time, which is, as it goes, you know, like there's not, there's not that many people that have won the Beach Body Challenge. And, had a trap, you know, had that transformation. So there's that. You know, my wife's sorry, I'm looking because she's over there. My wife is now having a transformation. Like to have 
possibly be very challenged winning as a couple and living that life as a couple. I'm like, no, that it's not a matter of wanting to build a business and reach out and help a lot of people experience that transformation freedom. It's like, no, 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 no. We we have to. This is this is a responsibility. It, it's almost like for for the Christians amongst us, you know, coming to Christ, you get that with all due reverence, like I'm not, you know, speaking, I'm not being irreverent to God here, but it's like that thing where you just want to tell people about Jesus because that's how important it is. It's, uh, and I'm having very, the pennies dropped in, that's how I should have been and now I'm treating this business, this opportunity, it's that important, it's that life-changing. And I think you can tell from like the way I'm talking, like I don't know that I've ever spoken like this in terms of like the business and stuff, but um, I guess I'll end it with, it dropped, I want that level of freedom, not a cabin, but whatever my version of the cabin is, we'll probably stay in this house if I'm honest with you and just be more comfortable and free to go and experience life and the world. I, I was explaining to Livy on the way back from the store, like just now, how far away the cabin is from from here like four and a half thousand miles and like how fast you have to drive you could see her head the poor little head was like and i'm like well i can't i can't let her just stay in this little welsh valley when the world is so big and wide and so much to experience i have to i have to facilitate that and for, and for the rest of my family and it's just a blessing uh for us that we get to do that by helping other people transform their health, transform maybe their financial lives. It's, it's, it's a tremendous, uh, I sow into you, you sow into me, and we, and we you know, a rising tide lifts all boats. And relax. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, Chris. Wasn't that awesome? Just the takeaways. <clears throat> um, man, you gave me the chills when you said, uh, show, live that there's more out there than just being in the, the Welsh Valley where you guys live. I think that's absolutely incredible. Um, okay. Uh, thank you for sharing that. And I think it takes that type of energy. I mean, we saw you do that with the Beach Body Challenge, but um, I think one of the things Chris got to see from me was like, even though we were on vacation, like I traveled the super weekend, I was at my my wife's grandpa's hundredth birthday, and then and then him and I, Chris and I were driving five and a half hours to the cabin and then spending time at the cabin. It's like, I didn't have to like plan time to sit down and do the BAT. We just found moments where we're like, let's do this. And one time we were about to go shoot guns and he saw my disorganization. We we're going to go shoot guns and go go out to eat. And I'm like, holy crap, we have a, I have a Q and A that I forgot that's in my calendar. So you got to see that's also not perfect. We're like, okay, we can't go shoot for another hour and a half. Let's, let's work for an hour, do that Q&A, and then we'll go. And we just filled the gaps of our time with work and adventure, and he got to see that. In between, and the, you might find this funny, guys. Um, I don't even think he realized he was doing it until I pointed it out. We were in um, Walmart picking up things to go to the cabin. In between the exit door of Walmart and his van, which is no more than like 50, 60 yards away, he must have hit like uh, six or seven voicemail messages on Messenger. I don't even say, he apologized to, oh, all right, sorry. I'm, I was laughing to myself. I'm like, he didn't even realize he was doing it. He was just doing these messages as we walked through the car with like bags of shopping. Really funny, but like really enlightening as well. Like, oh, like that's, you can make it work if you find these little pockets. It was just funny to see it live in action. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Cool. Well, let's uh, let's get started on this. And I love uh, that we're a smaller, intimate group here, so we can everybody has a chance to talk. Um, we're going to start with these ten questions, okay? And what I want you to understand is these ten questions can help you break through in any area of your life. Um, I'm going to give you just a small example. Right now, I felt um, I felt uh, unmotivated, lazy. Um, like sore, more sore than I should be without working as hard as I usually do. And, um, 
you know, I'm, I'm listening to my, like I listen to podcasts during my workouts and I just had this feeling during my workout uh, yesterday. I was like, you need to get your nutrition in check. Like I just, I just felt it. And it was like all the Halloween candy. I'm just munching it. Guys, I have a cold. Let me tell you how bad it has gotten. Like I follow my meal plan. I have a cold. So I'm sucking on like eight cough drops in a row watching a show with Gabby. And she pulls out a bag of hot, a hot Cheetos. And I freaking pop one in my mouth with a cough drop in my mouth. That's how bad I am at just putting stuff in my mouth right now. Doesn't that sound like the most gross thing ever? Hot Cheetos and a lemon cough drop, menthol cough drop. And I'm just like, mm, and I just start eating them. And that was the next day where I was like, I got to, I got to straighten my, no wonder everything in my body's achy. I'm not feeling motivated. And it's like, so that was my first step. So uh, a lot of times as we go through these questions, um, it'll help improve all areas of your life. Um, going through these, uh, these things, um, answering these questions, honestly, and truthfully, uh, the other thing that I realized uh, when I did that is I'm not intentional um, about my personal development. Like I, I kind of just randomly, every day I listen to a podcast. I usually, I typically go to, to Lewis Howes and I listen to one. Um, but I was thinking about when I was most energized and I most help people. And it was kind of the universal lines oftentimes. And I had three people who are coaches on my team over the course of the past 11 years. Mo the majority of them from like, seven to 11 years back, I had three coaches over the weekend message me and thank me that, that don't do coaching anymore for the personal development journey that I took them on and how much that transformed their life. And I was like, man, I used to be so intentional about which book I was going to read this week. And I talked about it and like, I did challenges with how many books to read. So it was another moment for me of like, oh, even though you're doing the business activity tracker every day, you need to get your nutrition in line. Like you're not feeling motivated and energized because there's something wrong. And it's not something wrong with the business or the business activities. There's something wrong with your life. And so anytime I see someone struggling with the business, it's oftentimes there's something wrong in their life that needs to be fixed. So for me, it's getting intentional about my personal development and getting intentional about uh, my nutrition. And it, it's funny, like I just, I started today on my, I started yesterday on nutrition. I'm doing awesome. Uh, two days in, but on the book, I picked a book that I was going to read. I picked um, Brendan Bruchard's book and I carry it with me everywhere like today. So what, because I took it with me, I realized that, holy crap, I'm back to like, when I work my business, I'm, scr I'm, I'm doing my business. Just like Chris said, I'm doing my, my business activity trackers and in, income producing activities. Like I'm at success club 16 this month. Like I'm on track doing that stuff. But I found that uh, by getting intentional about my personal development again, that when I'm not working, I'm scrolling Instagram and being just totally distracted with life. And so I'm carrying my book with me with the goal of not ever picking up my phone to scroll Instagram or to be distracted by it. Instead, when I sit on the couch, I left my book like in the spot in the living room where I sit down, where I usually plop on the couch when, when the kids are gone or Gabby's not around, I'm done with my business. I would plop down and I just start scrolling. I don't know when I got back into that habit, but it's out when I'm done with my work, I started doing that again. So I put my book right there on the edge of the couch where I sit so that I can, instead of plopping down and scrolling, I can read. So those are two things I'm working on right now. Um, we're going to go to the first question. I'll copy each one in as we go. Number one, and I'm going to ask, uh, just like similar to what Jay did last week, I'm going to have somebody answer answer each question. Um, the first question we're going to go through, I'm going to paste it in here, is what is holding me back and why? And I'm going to ask, everybody's no one's looking at me, Elizabeth. What is holding me back and why? Goodness. Um, what is holding me back? It's the fear. It's the fear of everything, the fear of uncertainty, the fear of being unknown, the fear of what if I fail? What if I want this life? What if I want to change the world? What if I want to change myself? And this is as good as it gets. Is it enough? Is it enough to be a single mom for the rest of my life? Is it enough to be 
at that weight loss journey of losing 140 pounds but never get more, um, that's holding me back, that fear of just so scared to take that step. And I think of it as you're walking off a cliff and you're so scared to take that step, even though you know that God's going to be there and God's going to take care of you, but you just, you can't see what's underneath you. You can't see what's in front of you. So you just kind of go back into a shell. And I have filled my life with the past two months with as much as I can, just so I don't have time to take that step because that's how scared I am. And it sucks because every day I'll pick up the phone and I'm playing like this social media game. And I'm just like, this is stupid. This is a waste of time. But thinking about all the things that I could fail at, it's just like, I can't wrap my head around it. So that's been the biggest struggle of why it's holding me back is just how do I let myself down if this doesn't work? How do I let my kids down? Um, and just trying to wrap my head around my new lifestyle. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Does anybody want to give some advice? Chris. Yeah, it's just a muting. Um, one of the things that made me swing for the fence with the challenge was that I realized I was failing anyway. There was there was a lot of things that uh, a lot of opportunities within life that much like yourself uh, Elizabeth had out of fear of failure allowed to pass me by um, but then it becomes like a self-fulfilling prophecy of oh well you see fail um, but I'd never really tried so when it came to the challenge or even the business now it's like well you could fail like, I'm not being defeatist, it's just, you know, you, or whatever failure means to you, or, or whatever. Um, but you're definitely going to fail if you do nothing. And, and that's how I approached the challenge. That's how I am now approaching the business. It's like, if I do nothing, then I would 100% fail. Um, and if I'm thinking back to, like, for me, it was like football and rugby, sorry, soccer and um, rugby trials, you know, for like professional teams. Um, up until changing my life around with the transformation, though the pain that came with those regrets of never trying um, was more than I was willing to, to live with again. And I thought, if I ever get another opportunity I'm, I'm just going to swing for the fence because I can't live with that level of pain and regret. Um, but luckily, uh, Elizabeth, it's, it's actually just like one choice away. And it's a simple choice. That you, you just have to think, do I want to put myself through the regret of not trying as opposed to, you know, the fact that you might fail? But I would argue that, you know, if you give it everything and you do the whatever is the best of your capacity, then then that will be succeeded. I mean, it, it, well, it might not be 15 star diamond. It might be three star diamonds and you've doubled your current income. I, I don't know. It, it could be... It, it could be it could be anything but what if it's your best and i would argue that you've succeeded uh the, the trick is not to like whether it's the challenge or the business or scotty or whatever like don't compare yourself to anyone and if you know you've done your best then wherever it is you land then that will be a massive success for you yeah i think there's some huge i think there's some huge takeaways there um i think one of the things that I made a decision about when I started this business um, and one of the things that held me back for the eight months before I even signed up to be a coach was I was kind of a habitual quitter. Like I'm, I'm the guy that's really good at a lot of things, but not great at anything. Like I can snowboard, skateboard, play guitar, build, <laughs> build a basement, all these different things, but never mastered anything. And I found a pattern throughout my life 
of where I would get really good at something. And then when, uh, when it would get hard, I would back away and do something else, which is kind of like where you're at. Like it's starting to get a little bit hard and you fill your space with distractions. So let's say I'm starting to get really good at the guitar and I'm getting close to be being a master or breaking through that next level. Then I would distract myself with something else. Like then I would be like, oh, I'm going to start doing X, Y, Z. So um, one of the things I made a decision was, of was like, I'm going to make this a lifelong journey. And there's people that are triple 15 star diamond. There's people that have hit 15 star diamond in 10 months. So I love what Chris said about not comparing yourself to anybody else. I've been a coach for 11 and a half years and never hit 15 star diamond. Like, so I could look at that and be like, I'm failing. Like I'm a failure or I hit, uh, you know, we, as a team, we hit elite for six years and then we missed it for two years. Then we hit it and then we missed it again. Like it, those are all failures, right? But they're not failure. They're, it's not, it's not really a failure. So I, I think a really great book just to start with for you, Elizabeth, or anybody might be feeling like this would be failing forward. Just understanding that failure is a process uh, that we all have to embrace. Like, I think one of my biggest regrets in life was um, I tried to instill in my kids is I wanted to be a professional baseball player. And I practiced all through the winter with the seniors when I was a freshman. And then I went to tryouts and I didn't make it. And I played Little League World Series, played on all these top teams. And I was like, I'm, I'm for sure going to be on the team. And I didn't make it. And it was my my favorite thing in the world to do is baseball. And because I didn't make, I just quit. I was like, that was a... I'm I'm a failure. I didn't make it. So I wish that at that time that I would have just tried again. Like that's not a failure. You just have work. You need to improve your skills, get stronger and, and keep moving forward. So um, yeah, I love what Chris says, fell forward consistently and you'll see progress and growth. One of the things I think is important for each of us to know, and I think Shandy kind of was touching on some of these things. Oh, I'm going to scroll back real quick discouragement question is, is this what I really want actually doing the hard work also feeling of unkeep like my hard work uh, won't pay off anyway I kind of came to a, a conc like to a decision of my own being and I've seen this with people like if you really die go all in with coaching like Chris said you might be a 15 star you might your top point might ever be one star diamond but if you go all in with this, with personal development, uh, diving into the community and friendships, following good nutrition plans, doing your workouts, reading the personal development books, helping and serving other people, there's nothing but good that can come out of that for you, for your life. By serving other people, helping other people, and keeping yourself healthy. So... Um, Shandy, that would be my advice on the hard work won't pay off anyway, um, is doing that. One other small example I have is I had one time, and Chris and I talked about this person. Um, we didn't talk about names or anything, but we didn't talk about this subject. I had a doctor once on my team that was, he crushed it at Success Club. He got to One Star Diamond. We were on Success Club trips together. And one day, and he started a podcast. And one day he just came to me. He's like, I can't do this anymore. Like, he's like, I'm going to quit. I'm just going to do a podcast. And he like, he canceled his account completely. But he, the reason he told me is like, like I'm seeing success, but nobody, none of my teammates are seeing any success. Like nobody can do this like I can, and I'm just spinning my wheel. So I'm just going to go do my own thing. When he canceled, I inherited his customers and his coaches. And I started reaching out to them one-on-one, -on -one, like, Hey, I'm your new coach. That's how it works. If someone cancels, you inherit their customers and coaches I started reaching out to them, getting them connected to team pay. I found customers, found coaches, and I got on the phone with one of them. And I had actually met her at a super weekend once in, in Canada. And I was like, tell me what Beachbody's done for you. Guys, she had lost 80 pounds. She had gone on and did the classic, even though she didn't look like any of the other girls. She had the confidence to walk on the stage still maybe 40 pounds overweight when everybody, most of the other people were like, had their physiques. She had the confidence to walk across that stage with her transformation. And get this, she told me, she's like, and Scotty, like I went through a divorce while doing Beachbody and it kept me sane, like having a community and workouts. And she's like, and I got separated right after my child was born. 
And because of my beach body income, guys, it was $500 a month, you know, like $125 a week. With that and the little bit of child support I have, I don't have to work and I can be home with my kid. And I'm like, I'm like, your coach just missed that. Just so focused on the success club points, the rank advancement, everybody needs to make six figures to be successful. Totally missed that. So just remember, as you're helping people, everybody doesn't need six figures or a cabin. Each person has their own success, the thing that they need out of this. So focus, my advice, Shandy, would be focus more on helping other people get what they want. And uh, you'll you'll have that fulfillment in the way I know how this business works. You'll be um, successful as well. Chris, do you have something? Okay. Okay, we're going to move on to the next um, question. We might have to make, uh, we're on, it's 30 minutes in and we're on one question of 10. So we'll do this as a two-part call. So we don't rush it. We'll do five questions today, five next week. Uh, number two, your greatest fears are what and why? Let me copy that in there. Your greatest fears are what and why? And I'm going to ask Gio before he has to drive to work. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Thank you very much. So, I uh, let's see. So, your greatest fears and why? I think, particularly, one of my greatest fears is pretty much what everybody has been saying right now, kind of picking back in on the fear of not succeeding. Just long story short, to be honest with you, like I am one of the first in my overall family to do something with my health overall. Because unfortunately, I come from a background, family history of diabetes, high blood pressure, cholesterol, everything, you name it. And I am actually one of the ones, the older ones, that is, to really be putting myself out there and just really going for it. But also at the same time, my insecurities continue to fall back on me. And the fact that certain things to continue to creep up the the mental, like, oh, you're not good enough, the, you know, you should just stop, you know, um, there's not that many people who are going to go ahead and um, look for you anyway. Just those, unfortunately, self-negative talks really is one of the greatest fears. And of course, laying down my family, because just like Chris said, um, yes, I have a decent job and I really love interacting with people. For those of you guys who know me already, personally, you guys know, I love love interacting with people i love to talk and everybody who ever meets me whether in person or online will always say you're just a very good genuine type of person and that is really genuine to me but it's also i fear that i can't connect with too many people unfortunately so that's also kind of like holding me back even though yes i have this charisma even though yes i think sometimes it's just too much and then the fact that people won't <clears throat> back and say that like oh hey you know what, thank you so much. But I do receive it in certain things, but I think it's just sometimes, I think plenty of you probably can relate to this. You put so much out there to the point where you're like, okay, where is the feedback at the same time? <laughs> and you're like, you're going at it, you're pushing, you're uplifting and you're doing all of this, but then a simple gesture coming back doesn't really come back, unfortunately. I think that's also what kind of really hits. Okay. Anybody have anything you want to share or expand on? Gio, you don't, I, I love, I love your energy, man. And I've always told you like, you have a, I was like, your voice needs to be out there more often. Like you have a strong, just charismatic voice that I think will reach a lot of people. Um, you know, thinking about fears, I think one of my favorite things from one of my mentors, Craig Holiday, have you guys, who's listened to Craig Holiday's 90 Days of Excellence? He says, struggle is much less painful than regret. And I think one of my, one of my greatest fears is like, to go along with uh, kind of what Gio's saying and what you guys have said, is like, like giving up or not living up to my potential and then getting to my not to sound grave, but to my deathbed and just being like, you had so much more to give. Like, why did you settle? Why did you not go after it? And I think each of us probably fills out with our parent with, with our kids too. Like, 
one day they're going to be grown up and gone and we have those you don't want to regret not being able to spend the time with them and all that stuff as well so i think uh that's kind of some of mine as well geo you are an awesome man brother don't let those don't let those thoughts hold you back like it's time to write the new chapter of geo is the man like geo has an awesome message to to share with people chris and then laura i've been in peace for a few years now <clears throat> and geo is head and shoulders um above 99.9% .9 of people in terms of um, being a faithful friend and encourager. And I just know that if you let go of this fear, Geo, you would have like a, an unfathomable, un I can't even say the word, that's how much of an impact you'll have, an unfathomable, there we go, <laughs> impact as a coach. Um, simply because of how uh, lots of people talk about being authentic. Uh, I don't, to me, you don't even look like you try, you just are. And I think that's one of the things I said at the super weekend in terms of like, what, what's one of the best things you can do when you're being an influence to your family. And I said, just be, just be you. Turn up as you consistently. Um, and people will, you won't be able to stop people being impacted by your message and what you bring and the, and the joy that you instill in others. Um, if I would offer like one piece of quote unquote practical advice is I would try and detach yourself from uh, the outcome of an interaction. Um, you, you can only you can only draw people so far in before they have to make it, you know, a choice for themselves. Um, so I would be like, don't, don't overly attach yourself to the outcome of an interaction, whether like someone buys or not. Um, I would concentrate on just being you because like, we all love you. Like we really, really do. This isn't like, I don't get anything from telling you this other than it's the right thing to say because because I do feel that way about you and you are having that kind of impact. Um, if you're that and just show up as that, then you attract the right kind of people and you'll grow. Um, but your worth and your value and your quality as a coach is not linked to like how many no's or rebuffs you get. Like you're accountable for what you do say and how you act and how you present yourself they're accountable for the choices they make so if someone says no or whatever then you can rest easy in that well you shared your heart you made an offer you did what you could do the rest is up to them anyway because like, you can't drag someone through the workouts you can't drag someone through the business activity tracker they've got to want to take ownership so you take it as far as you can and then leave the rest up to god and the other person I love that. Laura, did you have something you want to expand on? Um, well, Chris said it pretty eloquently, but <clears throat> Gio, if you're the only one in your family who's taking control of your health, you have a huge audience and they're watching you and they're waiting to see what's going to happen. And my husband was a naysayer of multi-level marketing and he just flipped and lost 85 pounds with, you know, our programs, our nutrition. His dad would be 85 years old today. He passed away two years ago and pretty much on his deathbed, he said, Kai, don't you do what I did and do nothing. So you, how many, how many other families are there out there who need a geo in their life, who need someone that they can look up to, to serve as a role model um, silently, probably at first, there's a lot of people sitting in silence and watching what, what we all do. And, um, you know, you just keep doing what you're doing. You're 
you're a man's man and you're a family man and you're a great friend to all of us. And I just, I think you're amazing and you just have to keep, just keep doing the next thing, one foot in front of the other. That's all any of us can do. I love that. Thank you. I, I wrote in the chat, but you gave me the chills when you said how many other people, how many other families need a geo. I love that. Okay, let's move on uh, to another question here. Um, what motivates you to succeed and evolve as a person? And I'm going to ask, see if, let's see. I'll ask Brenda, what motivates you to succeed and evolve as a person? That's an excellent question. Um, I think service to other people, helping my children, helping, helping others to Um, helping others to get out of situations. I've had a hard life. I've lived through some pretty, pretty big tragedies and to be able to help other people through it, to be able to see them succeed makes me want to be a better person. Um, watching my children with their, their children um, makes me want to be a better person so I can be a bigger part of their lives. So. I love that. So what I'm hearing is kind of using your uh, life experiences, some of the trials and challenges you've gone through to help other people. I love that. So anybody else have anything you want to expand on about that, what, uh, about what motivates you to succeed and evolve as a person? I love what Brenda shared about being able to pay it forward and, and maybe help other people find that. Anybody else want to share what motivates you to succeed? I think Laura's trying. I know. <laughs> I saw your thing go mute, unmute, mute. Unmute, 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 unmute. Um, what? I'm not sure what actually motivates me to succeed. I guess it's seeing other people be successful is what motivates me to, because when they're being successful, then I succeed, but I can't stop my own success because other, it's like what Chris said, you can't drag people across the finish line. They have to want it more for themselves than you want it for them. So I would say if I don't, reach the bar because I like to set my, the bar pretty high for myself then I have learned in this past year being on this team that I'm no longer a quitter and I will keep going I'm not going to keep adding to my plate of, of goals and things that I want to do I I will just have tunnel vision and keep focusing on the thing that that I'm working on so I guess that's what motivates me to succeed and keeps me going. <laughs> I love that. Um, I think one of the things for me, um, just as I'm listening to you guys talk is, I think too often in my life, I like I, I mentioned it before, like I quit on things. And so like, I have this realization often with Gabby where I'm like, I'll start feeling something like, it could even be like um, I'm out in public and there's somebody that looks super confident and they could be like 20, a group of guys that are like 27 and I'll be like intimidated to talk to them. And I'll be like, I have to have this conversation with myself and be like, dude, you're 41 years old. <laughs> like you're the one with some wisdom. Like you got to be confident. So for me, like I'm inspired to evolve as a person, just realizing that there's room for me to grow. There's room for me to grow in my confidence, room for me to grow in my ability to help other people. And like, I just don't want to be that person anymore. I, I mentioned it before where 
I get pretty good at something and then just flatline and go get distracted by something else. I want to move past that and become great at something. And that something is uh, empowering others to live to be their greatest self, to have hope for things, to give better and brighter futures for themselves and their families. And I can't help them do that unless I continue to do that. So that motivates me to keep growing. Okay, let's do another question. Um, question number four. I just answered some of these right here. From what are the three most what are what are the three most important things you have learned about yourself? And Shandy, I've seen you typing. Are you able to talk? And we don't care if there's kids screaming or what. Sure. <clears throat> Let's see. Can you see me? There I am. Yep. Okay. Repeat the question. <laughs> <laughs> what are the three most important things you have learned about yourself? Um, like in general or since starting Beachbody or Just in general. I think I've learned that I it's not rude to hold boundaries, like to know what's important to you and to stick to it and voice it. Um, so that's something I've learned about myself. Um, I've learned that I do inspire people. People have, you know, told me like, this is inspiring and this has helped me get back into fitness and stuff. Um, so that's cool that I've learned that. Um, And I've learned, I've learned I get distracted. <laughs> um, I like to, because it is so loud here, I often put my earphones on and watch a show while I do dishes or while I'm cleaning. Um, I feel like I have to do two things at once a lot to like cope with the chaos, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and often I like to do what, like I'll pick a TV show over like self-improvement because it's like, I don't have to focus on what I'm listening to, if that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, those are some three things I've learned about myself. So the, the, I think that question is super powerful because I mean, some of the questions we've gone through, um, obviously we want to improve our entire lives, but also by improving our entire lives in our mindset, we become, um, better coaches to help other people. So I think these are powerful questions. Um, learning these things about yourself, like uh, just to reiterate what, what Shandy shared, like the thing I learned about myself is when, remember I, I shared when things get a little challenging, I tend to go on and do some, start learning something else from the, the basic new steps. So where it's like, <laughs> where it's like um, easier right? To learn something new. So um, I saw that with everything in my life, like with a bass guitar, I would get pretty good at it. And then like, and then like now I'm, now I'm skateboarding and now I get to where the tricks get too hard and I go like, okay, now I'm going to snowboard and that gets a little too hard. And then like, now I'm going to focus on basketball. And I just jump from one thing to the next thing, to the next thing. So I love that Shandy shared, um, one thing she learned about herself is she dis distracts herself when it gets noisy with like a Netflix or something in her earphones versus doing personal development or, or self-improvement. What do you guys find yourself? What, what do you guys want to share? What are some things you've learned about yourself? I can talk. Yeah. Um, I can, I can set goals and achieve them, but I also quit when the going gets tough. Okay. Um, I do adapt to change. We've moved probably in 39 years, an average of once every year and a half, <laughs> a lot of moves and not just moving down the street from Maui to Atlanta and back to Maui and to Kauai and then back to Maui and then to San Francisco and then back to Maui and then up to Bellingham. And, you know, each time you move, you're moving into a different 
space. I felt sort of like I was in the military. So, and for me, it was hard because I had to adapt to the change. My husband would just walk into a hotel situation. It's, it's the same business. It's just different walls for him. But for me, I had to, you know, find new friends and find a different job. And each move led me to a little different career. So I adapt to change. I'm forgiving and can see the good in others. And I'm sensitive and emotional. I'm in kind of an empath, I think. Awesome. Thanks for sharing those. I think uh, in order to I think that question is really important because in order to improve ourselves, which is one of the biggest parts of this journey as coaches, is we have to know ourselves. We have to know what our weaknesses are, what our strengths are so that we can expand on those strengths, but also for our weaknesses so that we know how to do those. Like I think about Laura saying she she can adapt to change, like just that experience in her life of moving, uh, following her husband's career. Like as her business changes from who are her leaders to what are the products to how does the process work, she can use that strength to adapt. So she can know that about herself. Like, okay, I know how to adapt. And then her thing about, I know how to set goals and achieve them. But then also when the going gets tough, I tend to quit. Then she can know like, okay, I have to focus on when the going gets tough, I have to lean in or adapt and you know, overcome. And also she knows she can have that reminder of like, okay, I do know how to set a goal when things might seem overwhelming. Okay. I do know how to set a goal and I do know how to achieve it. What's the next small goal I can go towards. So I love those questions because we can, we can really see where we need to improve. It's not just like what personal development book I should read because Laura's reading it or Scotty's reading it. No, you need to what, what do I need help with? What do I need to focus on so I can work on that? So, okay, we got 10 minutes. We'll do one more question. Ooh, this is a powerful one. And then next week we'll continue with the other five. Okay, this one is, what lies do you continue to tell yourself? What lies do you continue to tell yourself? And I'm going to see if Leanne hasn't shared yet. I'm going to see if she can talk. Leanne, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Awesome. <laughs> What lies do you continue to tell yourself? Uh, I think the biggest thing for me is probably oh, like no. negative self-talk. No. Okay. Um, because I'm not naturally a very social person. I'm more introverted. So uh, the idea of me leading anybody is almost comical in my mind. Like nobody's going to listen to me. I'm not a leader. <laughs> Yeah. And, yeah. and like, I look for every, everything in my life that confirms that, you know, and so something that um, disproves that theory, I look for confirmation of that theory. Okay. Yeah, I love that. That's a huge lie, isn't it? It's hard for me to believe that it's a lie because, I, I, you know, I look for all the confirmation that it's true. Um. And then there's part of me that's like, surely that there's got to be examples as to why it's no. not true, but I can't think of any. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so there's a couple of things I hear here, here, here. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, that is a light. And I think it's funny. Like I asked, I asked the question, I specifically posed the question, what is a lie you continue to tell yourself and you without hesitation said what the lie is and then when i asked you if it's a lie you tried to say that it's not a lie <laughs> <laughs> so we do we do tell ourselves lies like these all of the time um i'll just kind of relate a part of my story to that um leanne is and i know you and i have had one-on-one -on -one conversations about this is for eight months i didn't become a coach like I had results with the programs. I wanted to build a business. I had full faith and confidence that if I put hard work into something, I could achieve something. But the lie that I told myself was, I don't look like a supermodel like Lindsay Matway. I'm not uh, someone that can get on a video because I found coaching or a way that I thought coaching could work for me by watching Lindsay Matway's video and some other top coaches. And I was like, I really just can't see myself 
on a video <laughs> inspiring and talking to people. Um, I've dodged speaking at church for my whole life. So I don't know how that's going to happen. <laughs> Me too. Uh, and so, and so I told myself those lies, like, and some of the deeper lies were like, okay, dude, you were this great kid growing up. This is a real lie that I told myself for the longest time. Like, like the poster child, good kid that goes to church, you know, the parents are raising a good kid went and served the mission for your church, came home. And then what did I do? I went crazy. Like I started playing music, started drinking, got into cocaine, got into girls, everything opposite of what I spent two years teaching people not to do. I went and did. And so one of the biggest lies I told myself was you work this 12 hour slave job and you're going to be suffering doing that for the rest of your life as a punishment for the poor choices that you've made. Like, this is your sentence. God is going to punish you with having to live a life like this for the rest of your, like, forget your goals and dreams and ambitions of being a pro baseball player or whatever that, that big dream is. You're going to live this, this life suffering and working because of the poor choices you made, like a consequence, because I'm a person that believes in there's consequences to everything. Is that a lie? It is a lie, but that's that's a lie that I told myself. So, um, and Brenda's sharing, uh, I am not good enough and using life happenings to prove it. Um, and this is going to go back to what Leanne shared as well. Whatever we focus on the most, we're going to find, we're going to find evidence to support that, that belief that we have. Right. And I see Laura's like, yep. And, and you'll see this in your life. Tony Robbins talks about this, but let's say, let's say you're like, I saw this recently. Okay. My, we ended up buying a Honda Civic for a family car because um, my oldest is driving now. But at first, she really wanted a Toyota Corolla, a white one. And I haven't ever really thought about Toyota Corollas. And then, so we start looking at Toyota Corollas. I'm thinking about Toyota Corollas. I'm on Craigslist looking at Toyota Corollas. I'm at all the, you know, uh, the online listings for the <clears throat> dealerships here looking at Toyota Corollas. Guess what I start to see all over freaking town? White Toyota Corollas everywhere. <laughs> and I hardly noticed them before, but it's because, and that happens with everything in our life, what we put focus into we start to notice more. So one of the things that that we need to start doing and in, in some of these things for um, Leanne and for Bren, what you typed in there are taking some of these negative thoughts that we have about ourselves or these lies and just reversing them, even writing them out. So if mine is like, I, I am going to live a life where I have to pay the consequences for my choices and I'll always be having to work hard and never have to enjoy a, a life, right? I would have to write something different. I am worthy of all the success and abundance and whatever I, I aspire to achieve. I am worthy of, I'm worthy of spending more time with my kids. I am worthy of being a, a positive ex example to other people. So writing out positive things for yourself and you're going to have to drill them into your head. Like you're going to have to repeat them out loud morning, afternoon, night. If you catch yourself at work saying like, I'm not a good coach in the middle of your day, you're going to have to start saying <laughs> like, repeat though, like I am a good coach. I am a great person. I have the ability to um, be a good example by doing my workouts, following my meal plan and doing personal development and growing myself every day. And that's what a good coach is, like just creating statements. And what you're going to find is as you create those statements and start to repeat those statements to yourself, you're going to start to find all of the supporting facts of why you are a good coach. You know how you, you, we're, you were saying that when you find supportive things of why you can't lead somebody, for example, Leanne, or why, 
you know, I'm introverted, so I can't ever imagine leading myself. You'll continue finding those examples. So start small, be like, I am a leader. I lead my children. Like I've raised children without having any experience before. Like I am leading them. I'm a leader. I know how to lead somebody. I know how to, you connect with your kids. I know how to connect with people and lead them. Okay. And Leanne, I, I, one of the things, once you decide that, like I have the ability to lead somebody even as an introvert, and you just make that decision and start stating that, you'll start to find the supporting facts that will, the, the supporting stories and facts that will start to come in. Um, and, and that's important for you to start making those statements so that they do start to come in. But I'm going to tell you, probably 80% of the elite five-star diamonds and above are all introvert coaches. 80, probably 80% 80 of them. And I know you just have to, you just have to believe me on that aspect, but probably 80% of them are. Okay. Anyhow, we have five more questions we're going to do next week. Um, so was this uh, helpful for anybody doing it like this, where we discuss more things like this? Okay. All right. Well, I'm super um, blessed that you guys are here. I want you to remember um, you're all children of God. Like, he loves you. Uh, you, like, he, he doesn't want you to be, he doesn't want you to look down on yourself and do pity me, pity me that, like, you as a parent, do you ever want your kid to do that? None of us do. And I think he feels the same way for us. I feel the same way for you. And so it's time that we start affirming these things, being really aware of asking ourselves these questions. I would even go in a little deeper and answer some of those questions deeper for yourself so you can start to be aware. Anytime you see something like the lies that you have to write out or things that are limiting you from success is start making um, affirmations towards those so that they can make an empowering statement out of it instead of disempowering. So for example, if you're like, if you have a statement um, that's like, I, I'm introverted, so I can't lead people. Like just turn it into a, an empowering statement. I'm, I'm an introvert. So I have the ability to stay really focused on tasks on a, a to-do list and things that need to be done to build my business or 50% of all people out there are introverts like me and they need somebody that's not too extreme that, that we can connect with and we can have our little bouts of connection, but we don't need to spend hours together getting all hyped up and, and pumped up together. So just uh, turn those into empowering statements. Um, I love you guys. Thanks for being on here live with us and we'll see you in the team page and next week on the call. See you guys later.